Hey everybody, we are Hi live at five. Yes. I'm, I'm Paul Wontora. And I'm Ryan Lee Gilbert. And oh my god. You have one we of have my an, favorite comedians is here. Such you a guys. Guest. Lisa Lampanelli. She wrote and is starring in a fantastic play, which I saw before, and it's back off Broadway in a fabulous new production, and we're gonna talk to her about it. She's so hilarious. Yeah. You, so you ran we love her. We love her so much, we're so happy she's here. Uh, and there's some news. What's, yes. what's, what's going on, Ryan? Um, so the first bit of news is a little sad. Uh, War Paint, the, the musical with Miss Patti LuPone and Christine Ebersole, is closing on December 30th. Um, the final performance at the Nederlander Theater will be that night. Um, it'll have played 33 previews and 300 regular performances, though. And uh, we've had so much time with those wonderful divas, but it is sad to see but the now, show I go. Mean, and we have to acknowledge the fact that Patti LuPone did threaten in a very friendly way yes. that this <laughs> would be in this very room. Yeah, that this was her this final. Was it, this was it. New musical, musical yeah. right? Like yeah. This was this is her final role doing a new musical on um, Broadway. So so if you haven't gone get out to and see, see yeah, it, if you haven't hello. seen more paint yet, go out and see it. Be a yeah. part of this Patty Lapone history. I mean, we have all fall, so yeah. there's, there's you have some plenty time. of time. Yeah, you, you have some time. Just make sure you do it. Uh, remember when Jack Gyllenhaal was on Broadway? <laughs> do, do you remember I? that? Those gold, the golden years, the <laughs> golden how, years of Broadway. That's how I refer to them. He did yeah. Sunday in the Park with George most recently, yep. and you know he proved that he can do anything He's and annoyed best. like tenors everywhere. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's so annoying that any, you know he could do everything. <laughs> and they recorded it, and we hadn't yeah, heard. Yeah, we we've known this for a while. We hadn't yeah. heard when the album was coming out, but guess what? It's coming out tomorrow. Yes, woohoo! They, they just waited till the last minute to tell us. So. Um, Tomorrow you can wake up and start streaming it. Uh, there'll be a CD in November, and of Great course Christmas Annalie gift. Ashford yeah. uh, was in the show, and that fantastic cast. And it's like one of the most beautiful shows ever. So. I'm very ready to listen to that all over again. So okay, I'm well, happy it's finally me happening. Me too. <laughs> um, some new show news: uh, Lucy Devito, daughter of Danny Devito, recent Tony nominee, and Max Crum, Andrea Perlman, Andrea Perlman, of course, of course, yep, yeah, no mom Hello. there too. Um, they're set for this new romantic comedy called. Hot mess, and this uh, these two play soulmates, Eleanor and Max, um, who've revealed every crazy and embarrassing secret and quirk to each other except one. Max doesn't talk about his exes, while Eleanor talks about hers all the time. So that's where the hot mess. Wait, Max develops. Crumb plays Max. Plays a Max. Yes. A Max. Yeah. He's not playing himself. No, he's no, he's a a Max. another a Max. Max. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, but he hasn't talked about his ex-girlfriends, and so he needs to do that. This comes from Dan Rothenberg and Colleen Crabtree, um, and it will play the Jerry Orbach Theater, which is right around the corner from here, uh, beginning November 7th, and it will open on November 16th. Cool. Love Max Crumb. Uh, remember Jersey Boys? <laughs> yes. Big Broadway smash yeah. hit. It's back. Huge. It's coming back, you guys. It's going to be at New World Stages, which, by the way, where I saw Clockwork Orange last night. That's right. I enjoyed. Uh, and it's starting November 22nd, so this is gonna be interesting. This is a big Broadway musical, and they're gonna like, like they did with Avenue Q. Yep. They're gonna scale it down a little bit, although those stages are pretty big. Because it's a New York staple. Um, mm -hmm. And they announced the cast. They finally announced the dates and the cast. Uh, Aaron De Jesus is playing uh, Frankie Valley, and yep. I guess he's played it before, and all the guys have been in the show before. Yes. Uh, Nicholas Dromard, Mark Edwards, and Corey Giacoma are playing Tommy DeVito, Nick Massey, and Bob Guardio. They're all well versed in the Jersey Boys. Yeah, yeah so it's yeah. back. It's back, people. Jersey is celebrating. <laughs> Tourists are thrilled. Um, Matthew Broderick is set to play the narrator in Fox's A Christmas Story production that is happening this winter. Um, the, so he plays the adult Ralphie who is looking back on his very favorite childhood Christmas Eve. Um, and uh, yeah, obviously, Benj Pasek and Justin Paul. Who did the did the music the Tony nominated musical are writing several new songs for this production, um, and then Grease Lives writers Jonathan Tolins and Robert Carey are adopting the book, and it'll be a three hour live event scheduled for December seventeenth. Well, so. then there's a lot more casting to come. There are so lots more casting to come. To yeah, Matthew Broderick's only. I mean, the mother yeah. is like a great role. Yeah, the the, there's a, a great there's a great role for a teacher. All the kids. Yeah, all of the wonderful kids. Yeah, his little oh, brother. Well, there's kids too. Calm yeah. down. Yeah, <laughs> I know there's kids in a. I got it. I, I got love it. that. And the show. teacher, the Carolina. And the teacher has role. the wonderful little. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah. Um, and then we have some stuff up on the site. The very first episode of Sincerely Me backstage at Dear Evan Hansen with Will Rowland is up there. Um, we also attended the Color Purple Tour presser yesterday when there's photos and rehearsal clips. If you want to go to church, go listen to that rehearsal clip. And a new season of... Character Study is back, yes. people. We teased it yesterday. It was a yeah. very exciting series. You guys love it. I'm not going to tell you who the first 
person is. You can go find out. Oh, somebody, look at somebody that. you love. And every week there's going to be great uh, behind the scenes, backstage videos. They're beautiful. Broadway actor getting into character. Yeah. So lots of cool things. But that's it. That's it for me. That's, that's it not it. Because when we come back, Lisa Lampanelli's here. We'll be right back. Oh, oh, oh hello. Broadway.co. How's it going, you guys? What brings you by today? Oh, well, you want me to do a vlog? I don't know if I have time for a vlog. I'm very busy here. It's, I mean, we're between shows on a Saturday right now. You know what? I'll do this first episode. We can go around. We can meet everybody. We can ask them questions about what they want to see on the vlog. And then, uh, then we'll get to work. Since Baking a pie is easy, if you know how. I'm still standing. If only life were as easy as pie. Waitress is a hit, raves the New York Times, with songs by Grammy-nominated artist Sarah Bareilles, an uplifting celebration of love and laughter. Sugar, butter, flour. Hey guys, <laughs> we, we are back on Live at Five, and I am sitting next to one of the funniest ladies I know, Lisa Lampanelli. Yes. I'm so happy you are here. I'm so happy to be here. I love this show. I have oh, to watch it oh thank you for saying so. And I love your hair. And thank I love you. I love your look. Listen, let me tell you something, me and my bootleg Hamilton t-shirt. <laughs> this is a Benetton vest from 1983. I hold oh. on to things, honey. That's how a girl works. <laughs> You are so stylish, and, and the color of the hair I love. Oh, thank uh, you. What is that called? Um, Marge Simpson Bang Justin Bieber. That's pretty much what it's called. <laughs> but no, I decided after I lost all the weight, I lost, as you know, 107 yeah. pounds, kept it off five years. I decided, okay, I'm writing a play, and I'm gonna like dress like a 19-year-old. So this is what happened. Now, I actually first met you at an opening years ago, mm. before you lost the weight. Yes. And you were already talking about coming to Broadway, and do you were you were working yes. on doing a show, mm -hmm. and you really wanted to do something on stage, and and, a, and, a, and I thought I, I I thought originally it was a one-woman exactly. show. Exactly. Is that true? What happened was I was writing a one-person show about my struggles with food and men. Yeah. And then after I got the weight loss surgery, I go, wait a minute. Food has consumed my life. I want a play that's with four women, different actresses talking about what happened throughout their life with food and also with the weight and body image. Wow. I Google it. It's never been done. I said, oh, my own, jump on this thing and copyright it. Right. But it did change names. It used to be called Fat Girl Interrupted, uh -huh. and now it's stuffed. And you know, my next play will be called Sunday in My Pants with George. <laughs> so I can't wait for that one. That should be a real humdinger, as they say. So yes, it is stuffed. Stuffed. Uh, it's fantastic. I saw you in it uh, uptown. Yes. Uh, when was that? Last year. Yeah, last year the WP Theater. We right. did the nonprofit run. Right. Then we had our financing even before we closed that run, and now it's on off Broadway in the best theater ever. Oh my the God, West the West Side, Side theater. theater, which is gorgeous. I well, mean, do you, you don't even know. Like my dream when I started writing this, I visualized the West Side Theater. I don't believe in that. Were you that. visualizing the front of house, which is beautiful, yes. or the inside? I mean, the front of house is fantastic. Can I tell you, I'm so self-centered. I was picturing the flag hanging the down. The flag, the yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> I know. My flag looks like a donut shop opens in the West Side Theater. It has donuts. It's beautiful. And you know what? I just visualize it, and I don't believe in the secret. I don't do no visualize uh -huh. and then make it happen. Yeah. But I made it happen. And I got the best director, Jackson Gay, and this cast is ridiculous. I mean, Nikki Blonsky from Hairspray. I know, I know. She's she's here. I love it. I, I love that she's here. I don't know how it happened. So what is she like? So cute. Yeah. First of all, I'm resentful because she's super pretty and doesn't need makeup. And this <laughs> took three hours, okay? Really? I'm 56. What do you want from my life? But she is so adorable. And she made me cry yesterday in rehearsal, not because she was mean to me, but because she <laughs> can get that emotion out there. This is where we got the actresses who just have this thing. And, you know, of course, Stuffed is funny. But yeah. it has those emotional moments about food and weight that we all go through. Yeah. Women, men, whoever. Yeah. I, you know, I recently uh, stumbled onto the Hairspray movie again, which oh, I hadn't seen yes. in years. She's so fantastic Ridiculous. in that movie. Like, yeah, you should see her move. I'm like, okay, honey, because she plays the big girl who's confident in herself, and she lives that. Right. I, when I was a big person, I could never embody that. I mm -hmm. never had the self-love, which mm. is why I had the weight loss surgery and work on myself. But she just has this confidence. I go, oh, 
I'm so lucky to have her. And you are always very, uh, I love how open you've been about the surgery from day one. You're very sure. like, this is what I did. This is what I needed to do. This was my journey. Yep, yep. And, and you're open to giving people advice about it or oh, talking yes, about it. Like yes. it's sort of, uh, so what's it been like interacting with like your fans since, I mean, you're, you are, visually a totally different person. Yeah, first of all, I never get recognized anymore, which sometimes is bad when you have a low self-esteem day and you want somebody to say, oh my God, I love your work. <laughs> like today, somebody yelled it to me. I was like, oh my God, thank you. <laughs> so unfortunately, I think they thought I was Kathy Griffin, but that's okay. Um, but you know, with my fans, like last night I did a reading and um, this woman came up and she was a bigger woman and she, I spent 15 minutes talking to her about the different surgical yeah. options. I think it's one of my missions is to really open people's eyes that this is a tool. Mm -hmm. It's not it's not a solution. It's right. a tool. And why not use it if it's there? Right. So you eat super healthy now? Super healthy. And okay. at first I wasn't. I'm totally honest about this too. Right. Because when they do this, it's called the gastric sleeve. Right. They remove 85% of your stomach. They literally put like a sleeve, right? No, no, no. It's, they basically not, just they cut it, off most of your stomach. So basically you have a little baby stomach, so you can eat small portions. Right. Well, honey, for the first three years, I said, if I'm having three bites a meal, those are going to count. So I just kind of kept losing the weight, but it wasn't healthy stuff. Uh -huh. Well, two years after that, I said, Lisa, you want to feel healthy and young, mm -hmm. do it. You would be disgusted by how healthy I eat. Wow. But 80% of the time, the key is 20% of the time, I am fine with having dessert, this, okay. that, the other. Because guess what? Nobody's 100% perfect. Right. If you go to right. a party and you don't have birthday cake, I hate you. Birthday cake is the best thing to ever exist. Yeah. I always say the less friends, the better. More cake for me. <laughs> I freeze that thing. So, you know, that's how I feel. I feel the 80-20 rule in anything kind of mm -hmm. works. And so in the show, and then who else is in it? So we have Marsha, Stephanie Blake. Oh, who right? did Othello with Daniel Craig? Are you kidding me? Oh Orange God, yes. is the New Black. That's yeah. where I saw her. Yeah. Oh, yeah. She's so good. And she's a real stage actress. I mean, she's, no she's fantastic. Right? And then Eden Mallon. I don't Malin. know yeah. I don't know her. She's on also Orange is the New Black, House of Lies. Fabulous. And she's done tons of stage. Cool. I said, this is broad. Well, you know, she comes into audition. I said, who is this? Why didn't I ever see her? Yeah. Then I start watching Orange is the New Black. I'm a little late to the party. Uh -huh. And I see her as the prison guard. And I said, oh, I love her. Uh -huh. Nails it. So I, how do you uh, develop the chemistry with these ladies? Do you, is it, is it just in the writing? Is it, uh, how, was that important to you to make sure? I mean, it's really watching the four of you and it's yeah. all about the relationships. It really is because at one point we, I'm not going to give too much away, but we, we really ramped it up since you saw it. Right. So we do a debate of sorts uh -huh. between the fat and the skinny mm -hmm. because we're like no who has it hard or the fat or the skinny it kind of mimics a very famous debate from last year there's, there's some stalking involved mm -hmm. so <laughs> the thing is to have those tense moments you have to have chemistry it's like doing a roast i know i do a lot of roasts you're the queen of the roast yes you have to like the person in order to roast them properly so this cast in order to fight has to really like each other mm -hmm. and off stage i have to be honest with you I get annoyed very easily. I haven't yelled once. <laughs> Two weeks of rehearsal. I haven't <laughs> screamed or yelled even about anyone behind their back. Do you get stressed? Are you stressed about putting this out there, having your name on it? Uh, are, are you worried about like the show doing well? About like, uh, do, Is it stressful to sort of, it's your brand and it's your name and it's mm -hmm. like a big, I know it means so much to you personally. Can I tell you that's the part? I want people to see it who need to see it, who need to feel less alone in their eating. Mm. And you know what? Five years ago, I would have said to you, oh, I just want to make the money. Right. If, there, if there's anything to be made. Yeah, because yeah, that's where you go for money is off Broadway. <laughs> uh, no, but I mean, I, I would have said, oh, I want it to get franchise. I want to. You know what? Five years ago, I let it all go. And you know what I said to myself? Whoever's supposed to find this play will. Mm -hmm. If you need to see it and need advice and to laugh at your issues, mm -hmm. you'll see it. So I'm just hoping that the right people come and are helped. Was it great watching women react to it when you did it before? Not only women, you're going to die. One night, there was an audience. We were scared to death because it was 99% men uh -huh. and a lot of them were straight. So I was like, okay, this is going to be a disaster. <laughs> It's so funny that they laugh. Yeah. And some men want emotion. Uh -huh. I think some men want to yeah, feel. Absolutely. So it's really cute. Even so, yeah. some heterosexual men. I, 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 let me meet one of them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, okay. We have some questions. Sure. Bradley wants to know what was the strangest day of filming Celebrity Apprentice? <gasps> you were on Celebrity Apprentice, of course. Oh my God. With the current president of the United States. I was. I will tell you a really funny thing that happened. Okay, Donald Trump at the time. He didn't hit on anyone. He didn't do anything horrible.
but he used to compliment the women. Now think about it. At the time, I was 248 pounds, bad hair, extensions, and battle axe going through menopause. I wasn't his type yet. So every day he'd compliment the women. He'd be like, Teresa, you look <laughs> beautiful today. Aubrey, you look more delightful with every passing week. One day he looks at me. He goes, Lisa, I go, oh, it's my turn. He goes, Lisa, doesn't Teresa look beautiful today? <laughs> and you know what? I realize this is what you get when you get the age, the weight, or a handicap. You're invisible to men. So I have no sympathy for these women under 30 mm -hmm. who get mad when guys yell nice jugs at a construction site. <laughs> Savor it, women. You're going to miss it. <laughs> so how's dating now? I don't date. You don't date. What happened? I got divorced two yeah. years ago from uh -huh. Jimmy. Big balls. Jimmy, big balls. I was going to say it, but you did. <laughs> and I have been celibate for four and a half years, which I guess maybe explains why I got the divorce. Really? <laughs> yeah, I just don't think I'm emotionally ready to connect with someone that way on a wow. spiritual level. And you know what? I work on myself a lot. So here's how I figure it too. Again, I let it go like the other stuff. I said, if it's supposed to happen, it will. I work on myself, I go to the shrink, I go to a lot of retreats. Mm -hmm. I said, you know what, might happen, might not, but I love not worrying about it. There's nothing right. to worry about in life. What a great attitude. I'm so great. So you're not always swiping on your phone. Oh, I don't even know what that means. Right. I know, I don't even know. I kind of always want to just go on there for fun, uh -huh. but then I go, oh my God, I suppose I see a hot guy, it's all over. <laughs> <laughs> so what was it like, did you rewrite a lot after the last run? Have you oh, really been yeah. living with this? Oh yeah. yeah. Like, do you think about it all the time? All the time, it's so cool. You must know everyone's lines. Oh, I do. Today uh, when I was running lines, I was saying other people's I'm lines. I'm sure it's hard so not the to. the annoying playwright who goes, no, you said it wrong. You know, they love that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it was funny because the second the run was done, I go, I know everything that has to change. And we changed it a lot, dude. You are going to be so happy. Cool. Because I wanted the funny parts to be funnier and the dramatic parts to be more dramatic. This way, it's like when those girls, because mm -hmm. they all hit a bottom in their life that makes them try to change, mm -hmm. I wanted to be dramatic. And also, this is how smart I am. I'm new to this. Mm -hmm. So what I did was... I did a lot of readings of very smart people in the theater that a lot of people would have heard of giving me good advice. And I said, why wouldn't I listen? If it rang true in my heart, I changed it. So I think I got a good schooling in the past year. I, I could tell you were you were doing that because even you just started like infiltrating our world. And I was like, look at Lisa Lynn, Lisa Lynn, and always working around it. now. She's checking everything out. Oh yeah, I want to know what's good. Because with comedy, I've never taken advice. I always had that confidence. Uh -huh. And now, I mean, nobody bothers to give me advice because I'm freaking clearly the most comical person who's ever lived. Yeah. However, as a playwright, I'm new. And as an uh -huh. actor, I'm new. So I suck it up. I just love absorbing it. I love that. Uh, David wants to know, which women inspire you? <gasps> I question. will tell you some of the young ones, and I'll tell you why. This Amy Schumer, first of all. Coming to Broadway. I, oh, I know. I'm Same. so excited. She's Amy, following you into the I know, theater. How dare she? <laughs> What's so great about Amy Schumer is I know how hard she's worked all these years. When she was in acting class, I mean, this is years ago, she did that full program with Esper. She did mm. all the work. And everybody thinks that people are overnight sensations, as you know. Mm -hmm. She's a hard worker and she's so sweet. She gives other people a chance. She put me on her TV show. She didn't have mm -hmm. to do that. She mm -hmm. does it with all these women. I love her. And she's a good role model, too, because yeah. she tells it like it is, but she doesn't try to change herself physically. And I yeah. go, oh, that's confidence. Yeah. So I really look up to some of the younger women. Some people my age are too stuck. Mm. Interesting. Yeah. Are there any uh, TV shows you would love to be on? Oh! <gasps> My obsession yeah, right you now, into? House of Cards, because really? this president, <laughs> this Kevin Spacey, yeah. terrific. This Robin Wright, I want to be on just to see her hair She's amazing. live and in person. What kind of role could you play? I could play somebody even more evil than the president, because wow. I am the queen of mean. Right. I always would love to be also on Orange is the New Black as the matron who comes oh. in with the stick. Yeah, totally. I love the stick. I could do that. That's good <laughs> acting, right? I'm an actor. I learned this. Do they still do the stick? Is that still a thing? I do, at home. <laughs> uh, Jan asks, would you consider doing a sitcom? Uh, yes, I would, yeah. if the price was right. Yeah. No, it always And if it was is. funny, and if it was well, well written. That's the thing. Yeah. If it's funny. Want to know what's funny about a sitcom? Or even any question like, would you do this? Would you do that? Guess what I do now at this age? You'll be so impressed. If I get an email about an opportunity, if my face goes like this, <gasps> and I start laughing, I take it. Huh. 
anything I go on sounds right, like it's good yeah. for my career, but and it's going to be like really a drag, and I don't like that person. I go, you know what? It's not meant to be. Because you have to trust the gut. The gut yeah. always works. That's how I wrote the play. That's how I did comedy. Every time I ignore my gut, I end up divorced with a freaking premium to pay for. So, you know, let's not do that anymore, <laughs> Lisa. <laughs> uh, oh, this is a good qu well, here's another thing. Patrick wants to know if you would consider writing the book of a musical. <gasps> Like Does that mean words or Like music? writing the words. So like somebody else writes the music and you write the script. Like Yeah, because yeah. I'm like a triple threat. Yeah, okay? I, agree. I, agree. I can't I'm, sing, I'm totally I can't dance, that. and I can't write music. But I will write that. What was the last Broadway show you saw? Oh, Evan Hansen. Oh. Want to know? You're going to laugh. I, I got on this Hamilton rampage where basically I went to opening night by the grace of the producers. I don't know how it happened. I got so lucky. Go to this. I'm very moved because the whole legacy thing really got to my heart. Went to see it again with my nieces and nephews. Memorized it. Had a great time like everybody else in America. Bought all the bootleg t-shirts. <laughs> Everything's fine. I couldn't cheat on Hamilton. There was a year and a half that I wouldn't see anything because I go, I can't. I have to be loyal to just Hamilton. And I said, <laughs> let me know. I'm, I'm an idiot. Who said that? I'm an, me, an idiot. <laughs> so I go, this Evan Hansen sounds like a good thing. Well, this was terrific, too. So now that I've cheated on Hamilton, I'm allowed to see other people. You, you can. You mm -hmm. <laughs> Linda Mal Miranda is a big fan of everyone else's shows. So he's so he, nice. He's a big supporter of all Broadway. So oh, my God. I love him so much. He would so be okay much. with you cheating on I'm Hamilton. I'm, like, going to be the Lin-Manuel Miranda of off-Broadway. Yeah, I'm into that. I'm so Why not? Good. Uh, uh, you used to make me cry, and you're doing your. We, we, I miss your stand up. Do, are you still doing it? <gasps> oh, of course. Well, the thing is, I stopped it obviously about two weeks ago yeah. because I have to do the play yeah. and rehearse, and I go on a full nother, you know, roll of dates after the play How ends. How do we find you on your, your website? Ends, uh, insultcomic.com. Oh, right, of course. And of course, Lisa Lampanelli on all those horrible social medias that I don't do, but I do. Do you, do you, uh, do you hate all that? I hate it, but I do it anyway. Because uh, you know what? It's yeah. the modern thing to do. I'm like Joan Rivers. I'm staying young. <laughs> <laughs> R.I.P. Joan Rivers. Mm -hmm. uh, you and Andrea Martin need to play sisters. Wait, me and who? Andrea uh, Martin. My hero. Have you ever done anything with her? No, but how much do I love when she is, says, you don't need no meat from <laughs> Greek wedding? Yeah. Oh, is she great? That's a woman I watched since SCTV, and I'm so happy that she, because yeah. she came out with a bang, man, yeah. after Greek wedding. Oh, she's a peach. Yeah. I think me and, like, I think I need to do war paint to keep it open. Yeah, wait a so minute. So you know what? War paint. I think you know, it's closing December 30th, they said. Yeah. Um, make it January 1st. I'm going to do one command performance on well, New Well, somebody Year's did Day. ask, Bradley asked if you would consider doing a musical. Oh, my God. In a second. Do you sing? Can I tell you a funny story? Yes. I made friends with Jimmy Niederlander. But it, again, meant to be. It was just by the grace of God. We had dinner one Who night. Who does not have the same nickname as your ex? No, exactly. Jimmy Niederlander. I, I, exactly. Okay. I don't going. call him nothing. So we're sitting at dinner, and I said, you know, I just saw this Priscilla Queen in the Desert, and it is my favorite. I said, I want to play that really butch woman oh my who God. sings, I love the nightlife. Wasn't that Kiala Settle? It was Kiala yes. Settle, yes. Kiala well, they Settle, yes. said, they go, yes. you know what we're going to do? Jimmy goes, I like you so much. We're going to make that happen for two weeks as like a limited <laughs> engagement. It'll just be funny. Yeah. Sell some tickets. I said, okay, we're about to sign the contract for two weeks. Uh -huh. She'd still get paid. I'd give mine to charity. Right. Ends up at close. Thank God it was before I was in it or be like, they Lisa Lampanelli you. closes a Broadway show. That's all I need. <laughs> then stuff is no more. <laughs> Uh, Bradley thinks you could do Hello Dolly. Oh, um, he also wants to know what's the best advice you've ever, you've ever been given. <gasps> never four words. Never complain. Never explain. Which means wow. stop complaining. You're not a coal miner. Mm -hmm. You stop complaining. Right. You're not in the attic with Anne Frank. Stop people. There are people who've had it worse than you and still do. So stop complaining and don't explain. Meaning. You don't owe anyone any explanation about why you do the humor you do, or right. the jokes, or defending yourself. Do what in your heart you know is right, and you don't have to worry. Cher said, and I quote, I answer to two people, myself and God. Mm. I edit that to be, I listen to one person, Lisa Lampanelli, because God, who knows, he doesn't listen to me. So I say, <laughs> listen to your heart, and you'll be fine. That's amazing advice. I'm a pretty cool person. You've lived a good life. You can tell. Like you, you really, really yes, you got it figured it. out. Well, I'm figuring it out. You're figuring it yeah, out. Always yeah. figuring it out, right? I mean, oh, it's a constant journey. I will be 80 and still going. Should I eat that cake? Hmm. But you know what? 
it's my lot in life. At least I can have something to show for my weight loss and my yeah. journey other than cellulite and stretch marks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Denise said that you are the best guest yet on oh, Live at Five. Listen, Look Denise, you have terrific taste. I'm clearly wonderful. I'm better than that co-host. How dare he? At least you and I have the same hair look situation happening. I don't know. Does your hair get higher or is this about the limit? No, I no, I can it can go more erect. I oh okay. Dirty. Uh, Caroline wants to <laughs> Caroline said, Oh my god, I love this woman. Aw. Uh I love the stuff podcast, Beverly said. Is there <gasps> a podcast? I just started my podcast. It's called Get Stuffed. Cool. And I obviously named it similar to the play, but it's yeah. not about the play. It's okay. really me. Oh, you have to listen to it. It's on iTunes. It's me giving advice, but I'll tell you what, because I figured it out, as you said. People need to listen to me, but it's tough love. I don't pussyfoot around. I don't do like the shrink and say, how do you feel? What do right. you think you should do? I say, you know what you need to do? Do this or you can't listen anymore. I ban them from listening if they don't take my advice and get a divorce or leave a bad husband or go on a diet. What do you this mean you ban them slander. from listening? They can't I download the podcast? I will not allow it. I will go to their house. <laughs> I will swipe their phone. <laughs> no, but it's fun. Get Stuff is really fun. Uh, Caroline agrees, best guess. Uh, Doug wants to know, what's been your favorite slash funniest moment in stuff rehearsals so <gasps> far? Oh, my God. No one had a wardrobe malfunction yet. <laughs> um, today, I did get changed in front of everyone, so that was pretty funny. Meaning because, you got naked? Well, not totally naked. Okay, because, but, but. Uh, you know what? In the room, there's four women and three gay guys. What's the worst that can happen? <laughs> and I have a full Spanx moment happening. Okay. With this. I mean, nobody, I don't care how much weight you lose, you need to wear Spanx. Like uh -huh. everyone, I'm uh -huh. not promoting them, but yeah. you need to wear some undergarments. Sure. So the guys were like in a rush. I go, you know what? I don't even care if you look, go first. And then I had a, <laughs> I had a, a snort laugh, sorry, pretty feminine. <laughs> I had to do the thing where you pull your boobs apart so you don't get rhino boob. Oh. You know, because that's uh -huh. the worst. Right. And they, the gay men's heads just snapped. And I go, that's what we need to do to not get the rhino boob. <laughs> well, I'm sure we'll have many more malfunctions throughout the show. What happened to all of your big clothes? Did you keep any of them? You would be so happy with me. I gave them all to my friends who are bigger than me. Uh -huh. And then even now what I do with my clothes, like this, after today I can't wear again because I've been on TV with right. it. So I'm going to give this choker to my director's daughter because she thinks I'm really cool. <laughs> I'm going to save this vest because it's my brother got it for me in college and it's wow, that old. It's fantastic. The pants are going to someone who, who I know who's a teacher. I love giving away clothes. How much fun is it that you could give a teacher a pair of pants? I love it. Give your things away. Oh, and that's the thing too. When you lose weight, yeah. Give away the clothes right away. Yeah. They'll never need them again. I kept one pair of pants, and I talk about it in the show, and you'll see why. They're big ones. Well, I want everyone to go see this show. You are fantastic. Caroline wants your vest. Um, <laughs> That's so cute. <laughs> Elizabeth said you're her idol. Uh, Ronald, can't wait to see the show. Uh, Raina, what's your natural hair color? <gasps> oh, my God. Disgustingly dirty blonde. You know it's bad when they <laughs> call the color dirty. It is the most boring. And this is the color it comes in now that I'm 56. So I got the bad grays. So when I lost the weight, uh -huh. the first color I did was pink because my guilty pleasure is <laughs> dancing with the stars. And I needed Juliana Huff's hair. <laughs> she had pink hair on Disney night. So I had to get the pink. But it fades too fast. Blue seemed to find its way into my life and will never leave. It's my favorite color. So Thanks. I'm into it. Yay. I'm totally into it. Someday I want to do my, my hair like a special color. You have to. Uh, I love that you call it a, or somebody did on the website, yes. a big boned, <laughs> skinny ass, all you can laugh new play. Yeah, that's me. Stuffed. Yeah. It's at the West Side Theater, uh, the beautiful West Side Theater. It's oh. one of the premier off Broadway venues. You oh, are right. I'm and so you get the, the banner and the donuts on the banner. <laughs> it starts October 5th. And Lisa Lampanelli not only wrote it, she's in it. Yes. And with three fantastic ladies, Nikki Blonsky, Marcia Stephanie Blake, and Eden Mallon, who I haven't met yet, but I'm excited to. Yay. Uh, and everyone needs to go see it. Her Thank tickets you. go to stuffplay.com. But can I say one last thing real quick? Yeah. You can also buy them on Broadway.com, by the way. Oh, yeah. Blah, 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 blah. yeah. I've always wanted to say this. Go to telecharge.com because that means it's the theater ticket, not comedy. Isn't that freaking cool? <laughs> I changed my life. I'm mentally ill. I love it. <laughs> Thank you so much, Lisa, for oh, being here. I anytime. adore you. I'm so happy you're, you came by. And uh, everyone, go see the show. And we'll be back tomorrow? Tomorrow. Tomorrow with another amazing guest at 5 o'clock. Bye. Yay.